Hello, everybody. I'll obviously take some questions when you guys are ready, but uh, for me, it's just the initiative of, um, you know, one of our major projects when we first got here was to make sure that we were inclusive in this entire state and making sure this team uh, represented the entire state and not just Hobart. And uh, we continue to build the brand and continue to drive that and partner with my state bank. Obviously, it's been a tremendous um, venture for us. and. We love the work that they do, and we love to make sure that our sponsors feel uh, that we're involved with them. So, um, again, to have the entire state included and making sure that we're driving um, what it means to be a jack jumper in our culture uh, and to partner with My State Bank in this venue is, is quite special to us. How are you feeling right now? The finals campaign about to begin. I you're pretty excited. Yeah, no, it's, um, as I said before uh, the other night, uh, I'm probably more proud of this group than actually last year in some regards just because uh, of the doubters again of just um, all the things that you go through during the course of the season, the grit and grind of just trying to get to the next game, the next game and these guys were just relentless in their process and um, to finish in the top four is quite a statement um, in your second year as an expansion team and again just tremendously proud of the organization and, and the front office and just everyone working together. Uh, my coaching staff was uh, incredible again this year and our players are just um, tremendous people, which I'm I'm really proud of. I saw John Reilly with the Ted Lasso T-shirt on yesterday. Um, are you someone that gets those things at the start of the season, pins them on the notice boards around the locker room and stuff like that for motivation? That some of the things that people said pre-season. Uh, no, we just uh, what we put around our locker room is the the values of what our players are being held accountable, and, and the cultural things that we um, hold dear and near to our heart and. Obviously, the big one is to defend the island to make sure that we're representing the state. But internally, our players have stuff that they're accountable for. They start every season with, and, and we drive that every single day. Um, and we try to live up to those expectations amongst ourselves, uh, making sure we're representing uh, everyone here in Tasmania the right way. What's the preparation like for Thursday? When do you fly out? And yeah. What messages are you? Yeah. To this, this morning, we just had a logistic meeting, basically, and some light work. Um, just finished that this morning. We'll fly out this evening to Melbourne and then enjoy tomorrow. Uh, with the dinner, the MVP dinner, which we're excited to participate in. Um, we'll have some practice tomorrow morning uh, before all that starts. And then we'll fly uh, Wednesday up to Cairns and, and we'll have a shoot around Thursday and we'll get ready to go and, and see what happens. Obviously, the season came down to a point yesterday, which yeah. is extraordinary. Um, and you've been very vocal about yeah. running the clock down. And things like that. Have you, are you starting to change your mind at all now or are you still sticking to your game? No, not at all. I mean, it came down to a point, but uh, if you go over 28 games, why don't you get one more offensive rebound? Why don't you make two more foul shots? Uh, it doesn't have to be the last second of the game that says, this is why it happened. It's the course of the 28 games. And there's a lot of ways in between those 28 games that you could have increased your point total by being a better foul shooting team, being a better offensive rebounding team. Um, and so, no, I, I mean, it was exciting, but uh, you can look at those things just as much as you can uh, saying that, uh, we ran the clock out with 12 seconds to go, and we should have tried to score a basket. I, I think it's it's not uh, equivalent to me. Have you spoken to um, Josh Majed, and I guess how you're feeling to potentially see him miss that entire finals campaign? Yeah, obviously it's, uh, it was a quite uh, expensive night for us in a lot of ways, and a, a lot of injuries came out of there. And uh, obviously um, Majed's is, is quite quite serious. And um, uh, when we landed here yesterday, I drove up to the family's house and his mom and dad were there and uh, they're obviously quite concerned and tried to reassure them that uh, they're in great hands with us and that we'll do everything we can to uh, make sure that what he needs is being taken care of. But the biggest thing is to get him back to Hobart, which hopefully that'll be tomorrow morning. Um, we'll be on the Tassie Spirit tonight and, and hopefully um, a smooth sail across and then we'll get him reevaluated here. But he's, he's got a long road ahead of him and a quite significant injury and uh, it's a shame of the timing of how it happened. He's an integral part of what we do and you know it's not so much his play to be very honest with you. Uh, with our group it's about the personalities of the players and just missing him at the dinners and, and the, his little quirkinesses that he has that the team's grown accustomed to. That's really uh, the thing that we'll, we'll probably miss more than anything else. Obviously he's a heck of a player but um, our group is built on um, the characters of the guys that we have and, and he's one of the guys that's gotten us to this point. He's also done a bit of coaching and stuff as well. Are you able to use him through the finals? You let him come on the road if he's if he's fit to. Like I think that. he's a long way away from just being out and about. To be honest with you, he, he's he's not in a very good spot right now, and I think it's going to take some time for him just to get back on his feet and be out and about. I mean, he took a severe, severe hit to the head. Do you know much more about his medical prognosis? I don't. Uh, when we get him back to Hobart here, uh, he'll start to go through that process and. 
and he's in good hands with our group and our physio and, and our, 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 our group that's here that we're quite confident of making sure he's handled correctly. Obviously, it's a pretty significant injury to Josh. What do you have to do in terms of working with your playing group to make sure it doesn't affect them too much? Um, I think our guys are, you know, quite resilient and uh, we have a lot of depth and uh, our whole process has been all along that next man up and you know we started the season with four injuries and had to manufacture that for about two months and then we had a couple more injuries in the middle and then we had a couple at the end of the season and I think all the teams are going through some of that things you know the Cans will be playing out without Pinder who was MVP candidate at one point or another and you just try to get the next man up and hope you guys are prepared and, and, and do the work and uh, great opportunities for guys also, and, and we'll just go out there and play as hard as we can and see what happens. How's Will and Clint after the uh, Will's got quite a fat lip, and you know he's quite lucky actually to get out of there without really getting any stitches, but very, very close to being quite damaging for him. And, and Clint's being evaluated as we speak, um, going to get an MRI, and we'll see what comes back with him. Um, just on the awards tomorrow, obviously a couple of candidates. Um, firstly, Sean, and he's probably someone who'll step up, I guess, even, yep. again with Jed out of the camp. Yeah, Sean's going to obviously, he's continued to grow with us and been in a great role for us, and it's a great honor for him um, tomorrow to be honored as one of the t three uh, players um, in that category. And so um, it's a great opportunity for him. It's a great opportunity for a lot of our guys um, with uh, potentially having some of these guys out. And, you know, we're happy to get Rashad Kelly back uh, after his short illness, and so he'll be with us and ready to go. But, um, yeah, Sean, he's been great all year for us. And, and Rashad's been so important too. Yeah, he was with us this morning working out and going through his process. And, uh, it just didn't want to travel him. He woke up a little ill, and it's just not worth putting on a plane and traveling and then getting in a car and doing the whole thing. So it was just better to leave him behind. How big a challenge it can it can't? Well, they're all challenging. I mean, there's nothing nothing easy for us. And, and this league is, as you saw, came down to last night um, to just point differentials and last second plays and all that stuff. And uh, Cairns and New Zealand and everyone that's involved in these six are all, to me, potentially teams that can win the championship. You know, it's just your injury away from something happening, good or bad. Uh, you just have a lot of potential things that can happen to you. And, and Kansas is a heck of a team, and they've beaten us twice. And, um, you know, we'll have a hands full of them. Did you watch yesterday? Did you have a soft spot for your old team and hope they get through? Yeah, you know, it's quite uh, interesting just because the fact that, you know, uh, I fell for those guys because they played a great game um, that you would just walk away and say, we played a great game. And uh, if they would have walked away with a loss, it would have been a shame just because they played so well. Uh, and you feel like you won, but you haven't won. And so for them to get it across the line, I thought was just great uh, resilience on their part and uh, expected from that group. Uh, who's the big beneficiary of Josh Majette's injury? Is it Sean McDonald? Are we expecting him to get much more court time? I don't think there's a beneficiary. I think it's just a continuous rallying of just everyone's got to pick up their game and whoever's available is going to go play. And uh, we just move on. We, you know, we played multiple times during the course of the year with him not on the floor. And our guys uh, played the whole second half uh, basically uh, in El Aguara without him. And, and we just have to pick up the pieces. But um, our, our guys are ready to go, whoever it may be.